Jehova Malak, Ola Malamat, Jehova Malak, Yami Rakis, Jehova Gadol, Makarian Tios, Olam Olam, Jehova, Dabar, Yat Sab Shami Yami, Jehova Edonai, Jehova Elohim, Kurios Tios Penta Creta, Kurios Tios Pistos, Monon Alatenian Tian, Jesus Christos, El de Jehova, E Basilian, O Kurios, O Tios, O Penta Creta, Basilias Basilian, Kai Kurios Kurion, Derek Emunabakar, Bishvat Shaw. The Megalogai of Yahweh Lelion Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God read and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, a training in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno, to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone and great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory where he always demands us for the spiritual blessings blessed upon us that before the foundation of the world we have been chosen to be holy, blameless, and we are the people to be for His praise and name and glory on this earth. And no human mind, no matter however brilliant or genius it might be, it is absolutely hopeless, helpless, useless, lifeless without the doctrine or the truth. Human mind cannot cope up with life without having doctrine in him. For unbeliever, the true light is nothing but the gospel. Whereas for the believer to become a useful one for Christ, for which cause he has chosen us in eternity past to the praise of Lord God's glory, is nothing but the doctrine, whatever it might be in the standards of the seven spirits described for us. It begins first with the fear of the Spirit of the Lord. It develops into the knowledge that is called as Yada. It gives to us the strength. It makes us to learn the counsel of Lord God. It also gives to us the understanding and then it comes to make us to be the wisdom and operating in the spirit of one God, the spirit of Jehovah, our God, our Lord. These things which have been prepared and kept through the spirit of Lord God, revealed to the sinful mankind before going for a journey, he says in Matthew 25, 14 through 15, the kingdom of heaven. For some he gave ten talents, five talents, and for other he gave two talents. In one of the parables he says five, two, and one. And the kingdom of heaven is been likened unto such, he says. 
when they shall occupy in the business in the absence of God and giving us this work besides Lord God the Holy Spirit he has given us his complete ordinances the things that have been needed for us on this earth to do he says Deuteronomy 29 29 he has completely made a gala exposition of this truth the same thing he says in 1 Samuel 2 27 from a man being sent by God to Eli to reveal I have revealed myself unto your fathers he says the Hebrew word gala again over there which is nothing but naked exposition of the truth in the same manner Deuteronomy 29 29 Lord our God made a gala exposition of his truth for us so that this mind can work in the sphere of truth if not it is helpless useless lifeless worthless and it cannot cope up with life no matter how brilliant your brain may be as the people are searching out to think what is happening in this brain and psychiatrists become major work on this earth to think they have all the solutions to think about life without doctrine your brain cannot cope up with life for unbeliever it is gospel, for the believer it is the completed can of scripture described for us in its statutes, Torah, the law, or the choke prescriptions, or the demands of what he has kept for us. So dear brethren, the great work which has been bestowed upon our shoulders is to communicate this doctrine. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse number 6 says, my shepherds have ruined my flock. They have been a flock without a shepherd. And they have made them to go shagag. And we have read that. And the failure on the part of the shepherds, even he continues in Philippians chapter 2, when he talks about verse number 21. I don't find such like-minded men who worry about the things of Christ rather than worrying about their own things on this earth. That's the problem for us. Therefore, in Proverbs chapter 19, we find a word which should certainly prick our hearts to understand. The error of knowledge. That's what he says, the word for us. In 1927, he says, live of you the Hebrew word kadal it meant to say forego or the word meant to say to be undone to desist to cease and why is asking us to cease why is asking us to forego why is asking us to let go these things he says forego kadal beni Shamma, hear and obey what I am telling to you. Benny meant to say again the son. You live of my son to listen. Admonition of error. He calls the word Musair, which is discipline and chastening. And what is this discipline and chastening? He calls them to be Shagag, which are astray, which are leading out you from the truth. That's why your brains are not working to the glory of God. They forgot who is the creator. Your mind is not minding the things of the heaven. Your eyes are not looking the things to be having. Your spiritual eyes to be enlightened. The things which Christ our Lord our God has described and given for us in eternity past. The spiritual blessings in return. What we have to be presented before Christ our Lord our God holy and blameless. Therefore, the purpose of the pastor teachers, what they ought to be, they are not. And quite obviously, we look, your life's being shagag. He says, admonition of shagag, live off from such congregations. They are disciplining you, they are giving you good chastisement in the realm of wandering out from the truth. And what is it? They ask you to come weekly once. They ask you to pay your tithes. And what is this discipline of Shagag? 
which will cause you to say to believe prosperity gospel and to teach you to say that Christianity is a bed of roses for you. He says long back, dear son of me, hear and obey the truth. You better kadal, forgo, leave it off from the admonition of errors. And you know what the word says? From the sayings of knowledge, they call it admonition of error as a form of knowledge. And here we find again the word called as the at, which is one of the spirit of Jehovah bestowed upon us. When you don't have the fear of Lord God, you quite obviously look to say that it is knowledge. What is the what is the knowledge? Knowledge is nothing but the olam olam paths of Jehovah. We read that yesterday in Jeremiah six sixteen. Right from the past, in the present, or in the future, if it is the truth that gives us life, if it is the truth that makes us to think on Christ, and if you forsake and forego the truth, then you are not searching out what is the fear of the Spirit of the Lord in knowing the knowledge. And many have gone shagag, including the so-called pastor teachers who are not having a mind. The same mind what Apostle Paul had a burden towards the flock. Therefore he calls Timotheus his son. I don't find like men who could have the same mind like my son Timothy. Who mind the things of Christ. But others are minding that the word meant to say over there. Who are enduring and going on to persecute themselves. Or make up their lives in the standards of the details of this earth. And they call this admonition of error as a form of knowledge. And this shagag is reigning in our pulpits to the core. And they will pay. First of all, we find their lives to be dead. As Isaiah chapter 2 says, there is no light in them. Whenever we talk to a man who is not able to talk in the terms of doctrine, think he is useless, worthless man. Because human brain, no matter how brilliant it might be, without a doctrine, it's lifeless, worthless, useless, hopeless. Because that brain hasn't loved to cope up with life. The brain of a human mind copes up with life only when it has doctrine in it, if you are a believer. If you are an unbeliever, the Bible calls you already, you are spiritually dead. It's as good as you are surviving your life with a paralytic man. Half of the body has been dead, so it is your life. Though you may be an unbeliever, you may think you are having a super brain, you are having an IQ of a high grade, no matter whatever you may think. The word of Lord God calls, you are dead. There is no life, that is, there is no spirit. Till you believe in Christ, you will not be having your human spirit created at the moment of salvation. And when there is no human spirit, you will not have fellowship with Lord God. That's the first time you have it. And whenever you sin, you lose it. Again, use the privacy of your priesthood, rebound and come back and do the will of God. Till you come back and do the will of Lord God the Father, you are not going to have that spirit operating in you. And you are as good as dead. Walking like unbelievers, he says in Ephesians 4, 17 through 20. Being alienated from the life and the plan of God. So your brain without doctrine is dead. And a man without Christ is always spiritual dead. And your brain has power only when it could know doctrine. It becomes to have life in it only when it has doctrine. Therefore Christ our Lord of our God says in simple terms, Matthew 4, 4, Luke 4, 4. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord God. That's as simple as saying your brain operates only on doctrine. 
If not, you will be minding earthly things, walking vanity in your mind. Matayot is being sucked up. Emptiness being pulled in. You may be a great man in the realm of your details of life in whichever field you may be called in, like an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. But these things are only for the businesses on this earth. In whichever arena you may be, you think that your brain has been sharpened enough to do this work and you may be brilliant in that. But none of these people could be equivalent to the workers of the temple when they did, when Moses was being instructed, I have put my spirit upon them. The cuning work they might have done, whatever they might have given that work in its color combinations or in its work. Today, though you may have given a replica to do it, you will not, because that is the power of the spirit of Christ. So on this earth, you may be a master in your realm of your law or your taxation or your financial issues or you may be in your psychiatric departments or in the departments of your science or engineering whatever field you may call you may be in your astronomical world your brain counts only the things that it could perceive to look in its eyes whatever best it could see the length the breadth the height the depth and that's only biological but Lord God the Father demands always spiritual. Therefore Apostle Paul says, We walk by faith and not by sight. Call unto me and I will show you great things which you cannot pursue to look. And the things what we see are temporal, the things what we haven't seen are permanent, he said for us. And that's doctrine to illuminate your life. And we reject that doctrine because you don't have your proper basic instructions for doctrine. You know how, for example, a kid when he's been again sent for the kindergarten for the first time, if he hasn't been there with the things that could lead him to know and attract that this is the basic structure of his life, he has to go through that. And if the teacher over there persecutes him or beats him, then the kid will live his entire life not to study anything. He just hates kindergarten. Likewise, when you have come for the word of God after believing in Christ, if we haven't taught you the truth, and if we would love to daub you with untempered mortar by giving you prosperity gospel, by making you that you will be rich, but quite obviously, you will not come to learn the truth because you are thinking the pastor demands nothing but the money. The pastor is happy only to be fed for himself. And you think weekly once is enough, monthly once to give tithe is enough, yearly once to attend the festival is enough. But we have to give you what is right. Tomorrow you are going to face that as a judgment. Proper training, proper discipline, proper chastising. Even right from the kids, when we train you up, you will learn your life, you will learn the fear of your life. Because tomorrow if we die, we do not know when is our death or rapture. We should be eligible to stand in his presence. Not like the men who were minding the things of the earth as Philippians 2.21 says. But like the men who were minding the things of my Christ. And why these people don't come first to learn the doctrine? Because they are being working upon the worldly activities. They are minding upon to specialize in their areas. I don't deny that's not needed. That's only a part of it. If you're not having your specialization in the Word of God in this life, then any other arena of your life seems waste. Because your brain doesn't have life. It cannot cope up with life. Your brain doesn't think. Because Christ, our Lord of our God's principle abides. Deuteronomy 8.3 We survive by the word of God. And the great pain for us in Jeremiah chapter 50, we have few things to learn. In verse number 7, which we are taking it out. It should certainly prick our hearts what we ought to be and what we have become. The admonition of errors have become for many of the people today to say that it is a form of doctrine for them 
but they are not having truly the fear of the spirit of knowledge because they don't operate in the seven spirits being given for us in one spirit of eyes are loving to the same thing which sustain my Christ in his humanity on this earth. So dear brethren, if we don't come to learn the truth in simple words, you're as good as dead. You're as good as giving an occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme your behalf of you. You may think how it is, because you don't have life in you. You're not living the life of the Word of God, neither the plan of God, neither the will of God. You're living only a life that is only pleasable for you in your flesh. As First Corinthians 2, 16 and, uh, First Peter, First John chapter 2, verses 15 and 17 teaches for us. Lust of flesh, lust of eye, and vagrant brogadakai of your life, epithumai of your eyes, epithumai of your sarks. And you go along to be as a vagrant brogadakai in your flesh. But you don't do the will of God the Father, but you think you're doing the will of God the Father. It will be as good as we read yesterday. That you have been conceived and nine months gestation period has gone out. And you go for your delivery, the baby will be dead. Though the scanning reports prove that the baby is alive. <laughs> That's what your fate will be if you don't do the will of God at the judgment seat of Christ. You may say, I have done this, I have done that. But you haven't done which God the Father demanded for you to do. That's what you have to look. And your life, your brain cannot cope up this life without doctrine. So dear brethren, for us, in Jeremiah chapter 50, which we shall continue after this prayer, we have a lot of instructions to learn. Because without knowing doctrine, people have entered into the pulpit to teach. And that has made many people to go their lives to be dead, though they are alive yet in their nostrils. We shall continue after this prayer because there are some words which we need to really learn and what the Bible says and where we are standing, it really makes our heart to be ashamed to stand in his presence and live a life what we are living. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the unique palette wonders of this word of Lord God given to us in the words and language of the scriptures so that you're nothing to be ashamed when you stand in his presence but rather we have rightly divided the word of truth. Keeping these things in mind, we shall learn the mind of Christ. Infinitely divine Holy Father, once again coming unto thy grace to learn thy word. Father, what a great truth it is for us to understand that human brain is useless, worthless, hopeless, and absolutely lifeless, and it cannot cope up with life as well, no matter how brilliant it might be, if it doesn't have doctrine in it. And the truth is your doctrine, O Lord, as you said long back in John 8.32, know the doctrine, and the doctrine shall set you free. And these people haven't come to learn the truth, O Lord, living a life which is nothing but as dead in the vanity of their, in the vanity of their minds. But O Lord, you have given us this privilege to teach the word, help us to rightly divide the word of the Lord as faithfully to Eli, a man of God, delivered his message. So help us, O Lord, to do that which is according to thy mind, according to thy heart, and according to thy soul. Establish that which is only according to thy will to this people, O Lord, because you have made man in your image. And moreover, in this great and unique dispensation of the church, you have given, Lord God, the Holy Spirit to indwell in us. Do section, Father, as we can study these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will understand and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we ask, Sovereign Lord. Amen. As we were looking... The sacrifice of a wicked one is an abomination, while the prayer of an upright one is a delight of Lord God yesterday. In the same way over here as well, we consider in Jeremiah chapter 50, saying from verse number 6, My people have been lost sheep. The shepherds have caused them to go to astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. And we expounded that two days back maybe. And then we find over there that these people, they have turned out from the hill to an illicit worship of place, that is from mountain to hill. And they went and they forgot that is absolutely, they made themselves to be shakak. And that is called as to ignore completely their resting place. The resting place is again called as rabats or rabats or a stretched, relaxed place. We read that. Now, coming back to verse number seven. All that found them have devoured them. The Hebrew says, all of the one who was finding them, they devoured them. That is, the people who are enemies, he says, they devoured them, whom the people who have rejected the word of God. 
and the enemies of them they said not we are being guilty it is not because we have been guilty we have devoured them we haven't done ourselves the life that you're going through the pains the life that are going through sufferings the life that you're leading exactly not having peace of mind in you though we have been called to be peace he says in first corinthians 7 15 followed by romans 14 17 as well as in hebrews because as far as it's possible be peace with all men again without peace and holiness no man should see god the same thing even in first corinthians 7 15 he says we are called unto peace but here living such a life of peace in Jeremiah chapter sub 15 verse number 7 they say we are not guilty who the enemies are not guilty that meant to say what then you as a believer in Christ what the demands of the Bible doctrine were there you haven't fulfilled it so you are devoured yourself he says the devastation in your life is because of you rejecting the word of God that's what the very simple point in simple words so he says over here we are not guilty in as much because in as much they sinned Yehovah and they missed the mark which Yehovah has set for them even our lives that we are going through the details of the sufferings or temptations and each and everything dear brethren purely because we have missed the mark which Yehovah has set before us you think your life is in your breathing you think your life is in the details of life you think the food that you eat will cause you this health you miss the mark of Jehovah's carrying cross and becoming his disciple you miss the mark which kingdom of heaven has been handed unto us to lead and to produce five out of five ten out of ten and two out of two rather than digging and keeping it inside because our master our Lord who gave us this gift has been out into his far country of his business and we are now to occupy in his business that's what the church is all about that's what we say in Matthew 13 52 to become like master and to operate under his will because we are here to take care of his home as the way of the master would take care we don't do these things and we expect that the food is the problem we expect that the climatic conditions is the problem and we think our solution has been found to consult a better psychiatrist and he would give you something good for you to reason along what a childish foolish things you are performing on this earth here the enemies they say we haven't devoured them we are not guilty of it because they missed the mark they did not obey the voice of Jehovah. that's why we like the enemies have come upon them that's what you find the same problem from the time of Joshua when he was been departed while he was departing he gave them a great counsel to understand whom you choose this day you look the same thing even in the time of Elijah he said to him whom will you serve is it God Lord God or is it Baal whom you think is a God how long you want to halt an opinion between two opinions the same thing in the Bible always for us when he comes with churches the first tongue the first one being the Othiniel and then Ehud and then Shamag we look upon these people who came along to worship and to lead them when they were been subject to bondage when they cry unto the Lord God the word we read the Ak cry wherewith it is not a help but it's a help of intensive care to be needed when we find the word cry out in the Hebrew the one should be kara the other one should be za'ak as far as we have studied now and this za'ak it gives for us you are in a distress mode you need a help kara meant to say you cry out to proclaim the grace of God that's why the prophets were been sent cry out kara they came not for za'ak but in judges 3 we read the people cry out to god because of the distress help they sinned against lord god they did not do what lord god the father intended them to do the same thing here the enemies are talking about and lord god the father is giving a picture or a overall view through lord god the holy spirit to understand being recorded and kept for us in jeremiah chapter 15 verse number 7 why did the enemy come they say we are not guilty at all we did not devour anything but it is the sin they have done against Jehovah he led them us to be upon them so we are guiltless and the life that you're living today without having peace the life that you're living today without having purpose the life which you're living is useless and worthless and lifeless and hopeless because you're sinning against Jehovah 
the root cause for sin the, the root cause for sickness is nothing but sin and men love to go back and look for a therapy men are not able to understand it's requiring for them to change their mind repentance Meta noia to have a mind of repentance to Lord God and come back and do his will they don't want to have this method of life to come back from their sin or sickness because when the sin has been gone the sickness has been removed that's what the passage we need to learn even in the life of Exodus chapter 4 to Moses even in the life of Abimelech the king in Genesis chapter 20 when the sin has been removed the land has been healed and Moses and his sons were circumcised he was been Rafa he was been healed we have sin in us and we think we could be healed by going for a doctor and what is that sin? You may say, I am not sinning against Lord, I am not practicing adultery, I am not doing a robbery, I am not doing this, but you are robbing from Lord God, the glory of Lord God and the grace of Lord God to be used worthy of His glory. You may say you are paying tithes, you may say you are going for church, you may say you are standing in the choir and singing songs, but you are not becoming a disciple. And for the pastor teachers, you are not making disciples, you are not teaching the word of Lord God every day, what the Bible intends us to be. We really do not understand how much we have lost in the translations. The translations are a base for us to enter and look the original language of the scriptures and teach from there. And here as well in this passage we find a great word which has been not given the proper justification for its word in the translation. And here what our entire Christian life or the life of every man or the life in the past or in the present or in the future has been decided to be or destined to be to use the words. He says for us, since they have sinned against Jehovah, and the English says, because they have sinned against the Lord, and the next word is, comma, the habitation of justice. Even the Lord. Do you know what is that? The habitation of justice. That's why we cry out for every time and hour we come in the message of this, whatever we record and put now in the past or in the future. Go back for exegesis, that's your life. Without exegema, you cannot. John 1.18 Anagenisco, the origin of the word comes from again exegesis. You have to sit and analyze and explain the word of God. And with exegesis, isagogics, categories, with right dispensing technique of dispensations is our life. If not, your brain is not operating in the will of God. It is dead to the will of God. The habitation of justice. Do you know what does it mean to say, dear brethren, in the in the Hebrew? It says for us, it is homestead of righteousness and expectation of the fathers of them. And who it is, Jehovah. Do you know what is the word homestead? It is called as the strong code number for it is 5116. It is Nave. And do you know what the word Nave meant to say? BDB writes that it's an abode of shepherds, of flocks, of pasture. Every believer why has been called to be the temple of God. Every believer why has been called to open up his mouth to talk in doctrine. Every believer whenever he's been called why he's been sent to show forth the praises of Jehovah because you are an abode of Lord's doctrine. Not just your brain could live when you have doctrine, but your entire life and the purpose of Lord God, what he intended for man in the past as well, is nothing but doctrine. In the present is doctrine. In the future it's doctrine. And when we go back after the millennium to be in his presence, he's going to judge us according to his doctrine. It's a homestead. It's a origin of the point what we could call are uh, where the shepherds or the flock or the pasture completely dwells in it. Nave, the word is taken from Nava. And that's what he says. This is a abode. Why they sinned against Jehovah? Because they forced doctrine in simple words. Therefore the enemy will say we have endured on our own self. We are free from such guilty. They sinned against Jehovah. They have lost their track. They have lost their life. 
Even as such today, the persecution by Satan, whatever you may go through in your life, is purely because you are missing out the mark of Christ. But now Satan has been judged in this angelic conflict of this great dispensation of the church age. And Satan, like a devouring or a roaring lion, it's one to devour how many it can. So what does Satan goes to do? It leads you not to know the truth. The rebellion, what Satan did, it wants even you to perform today by rebelling not to become his disciple, that is the disciple of the word of Christ. It says just pay nominal issues. The life that you are living in, you have to master in for your degrees. You have to master in for your specializations of areas in life. You have to invent and discover many things go in that. But you are not discovering your life. You are not knowing that you are a homestead or a habitation of doctrine. And the word what he calls for the people in the past for the Jerusalem, they were a habitation of shepherds. They should have been an habitation of flock, learning Bible doctrine, disciples and growing up as grammatias. They should have been the people where they should come and make it up for the place, not only besides doctrine or besides shepherds or flock, but also a place of pasture where they could get green food. That is nothing but Bible doctrine against Psalms 23. Instead of becoming a habitation of justice or a homestead of justice, again we find the word justice is sadak, which is a very important word for us. And you know what is that sadak meant to say? It is meant to say to beautify, to proclaim through your lips and mouth the praises of Jehovah. When you have doctrine, your lips will praise Jehovah to learn doctrine. That's what he says, Colossians 3.16. Making melody in your heart, so it comes when the word of Lord God has been richly dwelt in your mind. When the fear of Lord God leads you to learn the knowledge of God, then it will have fear in you. So he says for us, it was, it has been designed to be an habitation of justice in the English, but in the Hebrew it says Nave or Nava Sadak. If ever you have your church name, it has to be Nave or Nava, where the church, it has to produce. Everyone being trained in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, right bona fide gifted pastor teachers, that gift will be given by God the Father. We cannot interfere in that. We could only train up the one who would come for Lord's work. They could be in the flock. Our duty is to give them the pasture. And the serious responsibility laid down upon their shoulders, it could be given for them to become shepherds, provided they are minding the things of Christ rather than minding their own things on this earth. That's what he says in Philippians 2.21. I don't find enough men who could be minding the things of Christ. If it was a time in the first century, now in the 21st century, we have lost almost all 2,000 years. How many of them they are really minding about the things of my Christ? Or in fact, you need an individual believer, if you realize you have to be an habitation of justice, how many of them there are? How many of them they are really worth enough to call that we are having shepherd's doctrine in us or to make our lives to be when the absence of the pastor teacher is there, we are here to come back grown up as meat men and we are teaching and we are capable of teaching others who are coming up who are juniors to us. Do you know how does the cycle work? The first year milk, the second year bread, the third year strong meat. The first year category people when they are grown to the bread, then the new recruits would come. The bread one should teach to the milk. And when the bread group, they grow up to become to meat, the meat group should teach to the bread group. That's how we have to be there. An habitation of doctrine, an habitation of the shepherds growing up there. That's what Israelites were been called. They were the men who would show ways for the world. In fact, indeed, the 40 authors who have written the Bible for us, they are the Jews. And you know what a great thing it is? When we find the word Amen in the Hebrew or in the Greek, it's transliterated though. No other one word has been given to replace that word as Amen. Which meant to say, I acknowledge. Amen, so it is, so be it, O Lord. I believe it. I acknowledge it. That's the greatness of Lord God in the sight of this man. No man can change that one or that word to be replaced for Amen. 
That's the greatness of the people when Lord God the Father could come through his son. And the loyalty of those men, what they were in the past, certain men like Abraham, Elijah, David, Joab, though they were of dust, like Daniel, Job, Noah, Enoch, all these men, when we find them being a sect of the Jews, they really developed a theme for this man to learn. Therefore, Lord of God calls it's an habitation of justice. In Zechariah 8, he says in verse number 3, it's a land of truth and a habitation of holiness or a mountain of holiness. But coming to the church, every believer has been now called to be the temple of the living Lord of God, being clothed to him, the new clothes, which is nothing but and how much more we have to be an habitation of truth, how much more we have to be an habitation of great doctrine. But the mind of man thinks it could be great enough by having useless and worthless things of this earth in his mind. But remember, dear brethren, without doctrine, your brain is dead. We call you brain dead. Because your brain dead, you don't have any activities in the realm of Lord's work, though you may have activities like dogs and animals who go along for their lusts on this earth. You're having lusts to gratify your soul. Approbation lust, power lust, sexual lust. You have the lusts like animals. But you don't have life because you're brain dead. Your brain is dead without doctrine as an unbeliever, as a believer. And as an unbeliever, your brain is dead because it doesn't have the gospel. Therefore, he says, for the people in the past... It was an habitation of justice, Nave. And the word Nave, an abode of shepherds, an abode of flocks, an abode of pasture. And then it meant to say, Sadak, to beautify and to celebrate with praises. Therefore, he says, For us, dear brethren, Sadak meant to say, What is right and just? What is required of Lord God? What has been demanded in the doctrine that we need to do? Therefore, to celebrate his praises, he says in Isaiah chapter 16, verse number 6, that they shall show forth the praises of Lord God. The same thing he says in 1 Peter 2, 9. They are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear beloved son, so that we could show forth the praises of Lord God. Again, we have... What is right and just in the sight of Lord God to be declared? The two great verses for us to understand. The first one will be in Psalms 119 in verse number 176. Here we find a verse for us which says, When we are walking according to the Sitkino standards of his word, then there is nothing that could hinder us. Therefore, he says in Psalms 119 in verse number 176 that I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. And at the same time, it is 171, beginning of the verse. He says, my lips, what is the work of your lips? What is the work of your mouth? What is the work of your purpose living? He says, my lips shall utter the praise and the things that I speak. He says, utter to pour out from my mouth or lips. What is it? Tehila, to describe the qualities of God. Therefore, he says, for us in Jeremiah 19, if anyone boasts, let him boast that he knoweth Lord God. Let him shine and to be boastful that he knows Lord God and he makes Christ our Lord our God worthy to be praised. Though it may seem an act like a fool or a madman, yet it seems to be the glory of God. Therefore he says, Halal, 
or tehilla the origin of the word tehilla comes from halal the same word over here sadak meant to say what you do you beautify you go on to declare the praises of god you do what is right and perfect in the sight of the lord god that's what the word is for us over here tehilla and the word what you describe is to praise and how you can praise he says when you have taught me thy demands took the word thought is again lamat once again the principle for us mantano plus didasco being exposed in ephesians 4 11 and 12 and 13 daily coming and learning bible doctrine mantano as disciples didasco that which is the duty for us as a pastor teachers to teach and that's why he has given these pastor teachers to give this doctrine to understand in their brain that no lips cannot praise the will of God until unless they have been taught by God his demands choke the Hebrew word for choke 2706 code it meant to say the prescription of Lord God and every man on this earth should understand what is the prescription of Lord God given to this man in fulfilling the will and the work of Lord God forever so dear brethren, these things we need to look. When he says it's an habitation of justice, the word justice is nothing but sadak, and the word sadak is nothing but for us what is right, what is excellent, what is perfect in the sight of Lord God, we need to show forth through praises. So the same thing what in First Peter 2 9 he says, the word in Hebrews 13 15 says that the lips what we praise, that's thanksgiving to God. In Psalm 119, 171, he says, My lips shall utter your praise. It will describe your greatness. It will describe your esteemed nature. It will describe your excellency of the qualities. When you have taught me according to the status. And what is that thought we have to learn? Lama. If you don't become disciple, then how you will learn? Lord God, the Father is always tapping his feet to send his men to teach you. But you don't want to learn the truth. Therefore, he says for us, dear brethren, to wake up, to be like-minded through the will of God. And doing the will of God, he says for us an example. When we consider the life between Eli and his sons. If you have your Bible, open it up to look. 1 Samuel chapter 2 because there are many things for us to learn and we shall continue and come back from this verse again in chapter 15 verse number 7 but when we first realize and understand the things in 1 Samuel chapter 2 here if we don't communicate the truth he goes on to teach and there came a man in verse number 27 man of God Ish Elohim that's what the principal purpose of our life is. Every believer should come back to the renewed image of Christ. Ish is what God created man earlier. And Ish of man or whenever we find this word Ish of God which has been used to Moses as well. It has been used even for the standards of the prophets in Elijah as well. Here also we find the word Ish. We don't find the word Beni or Adama. That's what every true pastor teacher should renovate to the standards of the thinking of Christ. Not who will listen, how they will listen, or where they will listen. Or how many will follow us when we don't preach them according to the lustful patterns of their itching ears. Ish of God or Ish of man, which has been given for us, is nothing but to confirm in us that we are here to survive only to do Lord's will he goes on to look what is your taste what is your life he goes on to examine you he goes on to gives you the details of life like Apostle Paul will you come back and you say Philippians 3 8 for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ that has been set before us I count everything to me to be as human dung or excreta or you will still perceive in those details. Till you could pass that life, you cannot be man of God. No matter whatever you may be, through your miracles or healings or your money or your begging or XYZ terms on this earth, 
and be great in the sight of men and you think you are really great in the sight of God but the time will come when we all stand at the judgment seat of Christ and if you haven't given his doctrine number one priority to become an habitation of doctrine now way or now ah, and to produce their right pastor teachers produce there to give you right flock right grammar yes and the will of God the Father not to be done no matter however great you may be you are still counted to be worthless you are not on this earth yet Ish Elohim neither you will be at the judgment seat of Christ because he says greater punishment for them who do not do according to my word hear the word man of God the word Ish Elohim we have to get back to the original standards the same thing Colossians 3.10 he gives for everyone now according to the image of Lord God what he created you what he made you that you should renew that you should come back and that's the will of God the Father to come back to his mind to do his will to do his work so a man of God Ish Elohim unto Eli and said unto him thus said the Lord did I plainly appear the word is not what it appears in the English but it says gala gala twice do you think simply I expounded myself unto thee simply I made my characters known unto thee or simply I have chosen you on this earth without any purpose because he says in Jeremiah 57 he has called us to be an habitation of justice simply you think I have made myself manifested to you without having any purpose in life without having any meaning in life or you would live or you would live a life like these other Gentiles who have their guards which cannot hear which cannot listen which cannot talk which cannot walk which cannot run though they waited 850 false prophets on Mount Carmel and Elijah goes to mock them and says maybe they are sleeping maybe they're traveling beat a more still so that they could listen and come back but you know very well there are no gods apart from the only true Lord Jehovah our God and he gives them an option first and then in the evening he comes now to see making a trench pouring water thrice showing for the great glory of Jehovah because he's the only Lord God And that's what we have if we have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher you will be burdened with that work because you have that only work to do the work of reprimandation the work of reproving the work of edification the work of a glank in the sight of men so that others could fear not that we shall be impressed if we don't talk the divine judgments of Lord God those divine judgments will fall upon us we will be held responsible for that and the great pain of Lord God he says the sheep have gone astray because the shepherds have led them astray then quite obviously it's an occasion for us to look the people who are working out in the present Christendom not making disciples not doing the will of God the Father but making themselves to be belly oriented mans on this earth it's our time to reprimand them And yet these people fear men. They think if we talk like that, they will not get money. They will not get offerings. They will not get a second chance to talk. Who cares to survive in the lands of brain dead people? Isaiah said it was a land of no light. The present friend, we say, though we have been given to you, be indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, at the moment of salvation. These are the lands of brain dead people. Would you survive among the people who are dead bodies? Can you look the habitation of dead bodies? How does it look? Can you survive in a place where there is almost wilderness? Dissolution, broken down. Everything being haphazardous. No sign of a man to live like the way how Lord God the Father made the earth first before the rebellion of Satan, how it made. Completely tohu wa bohu. Can you survive there? In pitch darkness, nothing to look. 
And Lord God the Father makes man on the sixth day so that he could understand he cannot survive the first three days. And then he renovates, 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 renovates the same seven steps which we need to ascend. Because the life of consecration, what we live, it's a life that has been dedicated to the will of God. On the seventh day, he says, there was no evening. And this evening represents for us to realize that we have to grow up. The same renovation what he did six days, the same work he has for us again. To make up our lives to the will of God the Father. And we don't ascend seven steps. We don't look the work of God the Father in seven methods. And yet we say we are being renewed. We are doing the work of God. And can you survive in a place like Tohu or Bohu? We cannot. And we cannot be in the midst of this men who don't respect Bible doctrine. As long as the will of God the Father could be for us, we have to continue. Because do you know how about this people? We find the habitation of double tongues. We find the habitation of being liars. We find the habitation of hypocrites. We find the habitation of every mannerism practicing into uncleanliness. We find the power of darkness in their life operating rather than to look into light and correct their life and come back. Like the way how Levi, when he was being asked to follow me, he rose up, Anastasis, and he followed Akolotio, Lord Jehovah. He heard with the ear of his mind. But this man they will not hear with the ear of their mind because their ears have been blinded out. As their spiritual eyes being blinded out. The spiritual brains which have to be to look upon the fear of Christ has been dead. When the spiritual brain is dead, how they could come back to look in their eyes, how they could come back to hear with their ears, how they could call upon Lord God for help with their mouth, they cannot. So is the life of this people. And who cares if we don't tell the truth? The men who cares about them are they who are working out for their belly every day. And they want to pat them. They want to be the counselors. They want to be the dear doctor so and so. To teach them in the standards of making them to be pampered because they love to daub them with untempered mortars but we don't care we seldom care we don't want to survive in the midst of this brain dead people who don't respect the word of God when they don't have that respect to respect the word of God who cares then therefore the word of God says plainly do you think I have come open unto you, gala, gala. Do you think simply I came? I came with a purpose so that you should fear and tremble at my word. You should make me to be always preeminent. And you should describe through your lips the great description of Lord God every day. And therefore he goes on to teach for us, dear brethren, that... Did I plainly appear unto the house of the father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest? That is again he's talking about the pastures over here. To offer upon my altar, to burn incense, to wear an apport before me. The first thing he says, to offer upon my altar. If you don't give your life as a living sacrifice to Lord God, how you could work? To burn incense, giving your life as a living sacrifice to God. To wear an apport, that is to wear the authority of Lord God and to stand before him. And I give unto the house of the Father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel. And the work what you do, you are going to give it back. So he says in Leviticus 9 as well. The things that you do, they shall be glory to God. Then you shall appear before his presence and you shall find the glory of God. And then he gives that the people of Israelites, they have to be Nazarites. Even Amos 2, 11 and 12, we read that. But they made them to become drunkards. They taught them lies. They lost the purity of Nazarite. 
And the Nazarite law, he says, all the days of his consecration, they are holy and glory to God. But for us, right from the day when we were born in Christ till the day we die, all the days have been consecrated and separated to the work of God. Those days are holy and glory to God. But we are not using them in those ways. And then he says, Besides, I have given you to bear upward and stand before me. Wherefore, verse number 29, kick you at my sacrifice. The word kick is nothing but ba'at. And it meant to say despise, to trample down. That's what we have been saying you right from the beginning. The mystery doctrine of the church has been trampled down on the feet. This is what they have done long back. A man of God comes and tells them. Wherefore, you kick at my sacrifice and at my offering which I have commanded in my habitation which I have gave it to be a charge when you are dwelling in my habitation and honor us thy sons above me to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel my people and why does he say you honor us or you make your sons to be more glorious than me because father has failed to train the children, that's why. Even in the present Christendom, if we don't grit up our lions and fight the Lord's battle, the same question will put upon us. You have honored above me the liars of this world who do not use for the work of Lord God their tongues. They're using their tongues only to talk, but not to talk the truth. As we read that in Jeremiah 23. And when they call what is the burden of the word of the Lord. Every man's word is the burden. Because they don't have light in them. And you honor them. You go and mingle with them. Rather than from departing from them. And promending them on their face. And telling you are not worth enough for the work of God. Whenever we give a word to others and they say they're doing good, rather than reproving them, correcting them, chastising them, and making them to come back to exegesis, you're as good as supporting them, and you're honoring them about God. And today we find ample to the core such men in our pulpit. They say, when I come to your church, you honor me, I will come to your church. And when you come to my church, I will honor you, rather than reprimanding them on their face, reproving them on their thoughts. And those who don't have the authority of Lord God will never reprove, because others should be corrected. But the authority of Lord God calls them to reprove, because if not, we are giving them a chance, honoring about the Lord. That's what sons of Eli have been done. And here Eli has been questioned in authority, the man who is in charge. The word says, And honor us thy sons above me. And furthermore, to make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord of Israel said, I said indeed that the house and the house of the father should walk before me forever. Again the word for us, Olam, Olam. And then he says, But now the Lord said, Be it far from me, that is Kalyal, or forbid it. For them that honor me, I will honor. Kabad, or the one who give me that glory, I will honor them. And they that despise me, or use it me for vile and worthless things, they shall be lightly esteemed, or they shall be taken with a great trifling account in their life. And that's what the word goes on to teach for us. Behold, the days come, saith, that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of the father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house. This is what he gives over here only to the man and to his sons. But when the time of Jeremiah comes, the same spirit of Lord God talks in chapter 8 in verse number 10 to 12, your wives will be sent to other men. 
How terrible it is for us not to become pastor teachers if you don't have that gift. Having that gift and not executing in the power of his will is also a sin. Because you honor others above God. And that's not needed for us. For some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. We need to stand for the word of God no matter what it is. Whether they may be great men, they think they are really great. Or whether they may be stupid ones who really worry about the stupidity. What the word says, continue. If not, depart from it. We cannot be among brain dead people, tohu or bohu minded people in our midst. It's not a place of habitation for you. So he says for us. I will cut off thine arm and the arm of the father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation, in all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man thy house forever. And then he says, The affliction of the tabernacle for all the wealth which God would have given Israel. So you pay back something extra apart from that. And the man of thine thine of thine whom I shall not cut off from mine altar shall be to consume thy eyes and to grieve thy heart and all the increase of thy house shall die in the flower of their age. <laughs> they die like a mortal man because man who is not doing the will of God is not exercising the immortal power in him. He is just dying like a mortal man having no purpose. And this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons on Opini and Finas. In one day they shall die, both of them. And I will rise up me a faithful priest. This is what Lord God the Father will establish, Kum, because he has all the power in him. A faithful priest, the word faithful, Ama, the one who would confirm my work. And the word priest is again called as Kohen. In that Kohen line you find priests like Levitical priesthood, Zadokite priesthood, Aaronic priesthood and the high priest who are faithful followed by the Melchizedek or Messiah. That shall do build up Asa according to that which is in my heart and in my mind that is the soul. The word Leib, the inner thoughts, the inner man and the things pertaining to his Nepesh, the soul. That's what we are here, to do the will of God and the will of God's heart and the will of God's mind and soul. And I will build him a sure house. The word build is Bana. Without anything he could do anything. So he is. He's called as Bana. It's a sure house. The house again called as Amon, the, the Amon, the faithful house. But it, the word meant to say, the dwelling place. And he shall walk before my Halak, the word meant to say, his course of life shall be before mine face or anointed. That is called as Masiak or the messianic word which derives from there. As my anointed one, then for that time it was like Christ for them and because the one who does the will of God forever. That is for the time of his life and for the things if his children do good for their children. But even Samuel also made their children not to walk according to the will. So it shall come to pass that everyone that is left in the house shall come and crouch to him for a peace. And this was a standard for which the drought they might have got it. And for silver and a morsel of bread. And they shall say, put me, I pray thee, into one of the priest's office that I may eat a piece of bread. That I may join myself about the work of the priesthood. And these are the things we look, how the Levitical priesthood was been managed. We looked at even in Malachi till they could come back. So dear brethren, the point what we want to learn, if Lord God the Father would rise up his faithful priest, they would do what is according to the will of, heart, will of, will of the Lord's heart and will of the Lord's soul. If they don't do according to that, then they are not the work of Christ. Therefore, coming back to Jeremiah chapter 15, verse number 7, he says, It was an habitation of justice, or Nave Sadak, a place where doctrine is being given, a place where flock will come to learn the word of the Lord. 
a place where pasture has been found in ample and what you do you go to describe the praises of God the word Siddhak meant to say that which is beautifying that which would could be celebrated with praises it is not the people today who talk in the Pentecostal real tongues and say they are really doing praises to God no a praise that could come from doctrine the songs that could come from the filling of your heart with the word of Lord and the power of God the Holy Spirit so dear brethren he says it's a habitation of righteousness and it's a habitation of expectation and the fathers to whom when he says in Jeremiah 6 16 go back and search your old paths Olam Olam ways the fathers had that hope the word hope is expectation that is always knowledge of Bible doctrine is our only hope and the word hope is nothing but ground that's why man's brain is useless worthless hopeless lifeless without doctrine it could be worthful only when it has been taken in the ground of doctrine it could be usable only when it has been taken in the standards of doctrine so he says that ground was for your fathers and that ground was only upon Jehovah. If he wouldn't reveal to us this doctrine, we wouldn't have known. But he has given to us so that the faithful pastor teachers could teach. And yet they failed. And as long as we have breath in our nostrils, we shall not fail. Though they may be hearers or phobias of our word, we seldom care. Because we know very well their brains are useless. Their brains are worthless. If they would be fearful about Lord God, they would be looking upon the later one and they would be wise enough, he said long back, in Proverbs as well as in Deuteronomy. But these men are not wise enough. Though Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 9 and 10, we walk day by day in the view of the judgment seat of Christ. Breath by breath analyzing, when we stand tomorrow in his presence, we shall not be held responsible for using the grace of Lord God in vain. And he says, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, the Lord who is their hope, and the hope of their fathers, the enemies were being said, we are not guilty. <laughs> you suffer not enjoying the great peace of Lord's life, purely you are still brain dead. How to activate your brain? Believe in Christ if you are an unbeliever. If you are a believer already, use rebound the privacy of your priesthood. Get back into the fellowship of Lord God. And as you know how you stock your food in the time of the season of lockdown. Greater than that, you take up your word of God every day and understand the will of God. And be the children of God. As he said long back to the Israelites, they were an habitation of Sadak. But he calls us now, we are not just an habitation or the word to use. Nave, or the producing of flock, or the making shepherds, or making pasture. But in Britain, we are now, as the word of God goes to say, the wife of Christ. And we are in that a living stone. And every believer being the church of God. He has in him to build up as Ephesians 2.20 goes to teach. Upon the chief cornerstone building up your Naon temple, holy of the holy temple. To the praise of his glory to the highest. And dear brethren, what a unique privilege it is for us to learn. That in eternity past, Lord of our God has designed and kept for us these things. He teaches to us in a crystal clear method what went wrong. He expounds to us through the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and exegesis what is going wrong. And it's our privilege to cry out and say to you. And what else our tongue or voice or words could be used apart from glorifying God the Father and to honor him above, above everything else on this earth. We cry out to declare the word of God. The word of truth, your life. 
and you don't believe these things, it's all left to you, dear Prabhu. So in the New Testament, he says for us, I don't find a man minding upon the things of Lord God, but there are enough men who mind the things in the standards of life when he teaches to us in Philippians chapter 2. He says, all, verse number 21, for the own selves are seeking the word Zato, inquiring to endure earthly things, but not the things of Christ Jesus. And the things of Christ Jesus would be to make you to become disciple, executing the protocol plan of God, becoming a winner believer and getting maximum glorification to Christ our Lord. Therefore he says, to whom God would make known what are the riches of this glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The Israelites have failed in their mission, but we the church, having in us Christ our Lord, the hope of glory among the Gentiles, when we have been given to be engrafted into that good olive plant, why we shall also be cut off thinking that we haven't known the will of God. Though you have been wild, you have been engrafted to become great, Romans 11, and becoming to produce in you the good fruit. Let's be once again the habitation of Sitkeno, habitation of showing forth the praises of God because we have been made the temple of God. And for such extent, dear brethren, Lord God the Father has bestowed upon us greater grace than ever you could ever think, greater glory than ever you could ever receive. The glory of the same work what Christ our Lord our God sustained in his ministry, the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit operating in us, the seven spirits in one spirit. And furthermore, besides that he has given to us the completed chaos scripture, Above all, he has given to us the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to teach. Ask, knock, seek, search the standards of truth. If you are thinking, you are not spiritually branded. If you are, then it will be the same. It will be as if blowing a trumpet before a dead man. But our work is to blow no matter what. Because Lord God the Father policy is always grace before judgment. He gives you enough grace, ample grace. And we read that in Exodus 5, 3, isn't it? If you don't proclaim divine judgment of Lord God, then you will fall for pestilence and you will fall for sword. The same thing we read in 1 Samuel 2. If you honor your sons above me, you will find for you a tough time. And then he says, far be it from me, henceforth, not like that. Those who honor me, then I will, them, I will honor them back. The word kabod. You show forth to Lord God kabod, he gives us the work of kabod. Prove yourselves that your sin will not catch you. Because he said, Ephesians 5.10, proving what is acceptable in the sight of God, he demands for us. And if you don't produce in the kingdom of God according to the work of Christ, always being peace and joy and righteousness in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, then never you will realize the things what we are teaching to you, the hope of glory, Christ in you. And this plausious riches have been given for us in the church age to mind the things of Christ Jesus, our Lord of our God, not and never to be minding the things of this flesh. Because Jeremiah chapter 15 verse number 7 teaches to us what they ought to be, what they were not, what we ought to be greater than them in the church age and what we are turning out to be. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow as Lord God the Holy Spirit leadeth us to the praise of His glory to understand His will, His mind and only His work to be established through us. We shall come back and continue tomorrow. And which way you want to go, you decide, dear brother. With our head, board, and eyes closed, the closing movement is being dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order of returning to Lord God, the Father, in the privacy of your soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Lord, my Savior. 
that's the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth this eternal truth for so very simple believing christ you shall be saved whereas for the believer the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of bible doctrine wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess not the truth and the truth shall set you free and for the pastor teachers the greatest matter is to carry the sotan lagan herald the word in season not of season because the dharma from my witnesses for it have been called the number one dharma from my witnesses in the infinity followed by bible in our hands and number two dharma from my witnesses or hearers in the no hearers dear brother not worry besides nature the entire angelic cross will be our witnesses and what is our work our work is to rightly divide the word of truth no matter however the chips may fall so which we want to go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great lesson we need to learn from Isaiah chapter 15, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse number seven about. It certainly breaks our heart. What a failures we have become. Though you have said repeatedly in First Peter for us, as well as in Hebrews 13:15 as well, that we have to give all this through our lips praise of your glory. If we are not an habitation of truth, O Lord, like Isaiah, the way have we proclaimed? I live in the midst of unclean people. Our lives have become. Not just an unclean people, O oh Lord, in the present Christendom time, you know very well about her, about the standards of this world and us, which is just like a spiritually printed people in and around the world. Though they act hypocritically as Christians, Father, you know what their intention is all about. So, Father, cleanse us out from such midst of these people, and Father, O oh Lord, thy name and thy glory to be given back unto thee, because you deserve it, and all the people might have blasphemed, O oh Lord, Help us from this time for our lives to be for your glory, completely dedicated as the things goes on for their work in producing the great Nave Siddhak and the word which you have given for us right from the beginning, our eternal hope. Through thy word, O Lord, we are much thankful in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to learn day by day the will and lead us, O Lord, according to thy glory. And say that if there is enough to weigh in us, Father, chop it off into pieces by putting it to death and lead us for our work because no sin you have your glory in us help us father to be far from it according to the will in christ matchless people's gracious name we pray father may lord god the holy spirit enlighten and challenge us by this message in christ's name we ask sovereign lord 